Hey guys, um, this is going to be my one year video. I don't know how to insert pictures, so I'm just going to literally hold them up. Um, I'm going to do the one where I'm clothed first, and then I will pause, and then I'll do my skin picture. Um, so if you don't want to see that, then fast forward about 30 seconds. And then my skin picture. So it is officially my one year search anniversary today. Um, it's been a road, let's just say that for sure. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to set my phone down so I don't have to hold it. Um, anyways, I made uh, some notes so that I can attempt to stay on track here. So I have lost 10 clothing sizes. I went from a size 30, 32 down to an 11, 12 in misses, or um, a, I guess it would be a size 10 in women's. And then um, my pants size, like leggings and that kind of stuff, I went from a 5X all the way down to a medium. And my shirts were a 5X. And this shirt that I have on right now is a large. Um, and that's just because of my chest size. Um, I could fit into a medium if I wore a sports bra and just let them hang, you know. But with an actual bra on, it's, it's that. Um, I actually weighed in at 191 even. So that's a total loss of 149 pounds. 115 of that has been since my um, gastric bypass. I lost a total of 192.5 inches. And then since surgery, 141 and a half inches. Um, 10 dress sizes. 10. Like I went on and tried on in the misses section a size 12. I could have went down to a 10, but I, like I said, I like mine a little bit looser. Um, that's just me though. So all in all, um, the doctor's appointments and everything have been great. I found out that I am absorbing like really, really well. They're, they're actually pretty amazed at how well I, my absorption rate is. So much so that they have taken me off of one of my multivitamins. So instead of taking two a day like most people do, I only take one. And so that's really cool that I have one less pill that, that I have to take. Um, I also got approved to be able to start working out slowly. So yeah, Monday, today's Wednesday. So Monday, I started with yoga, beginner's yoga video here at the house. <laughs> and um, I did 10 minutes of it. And I thought during it, I was like, I was pretty amazed that I could do the fold and, you know, do some of the, the moves and stuff like that. I was like, oh my God, I can actually get up from all fours and stand up just backing myself up. Um, which non-scale victory right there. Like I never would have been able to get up off the floor without a chair or some kind of assistance before surgery. Um, so that's pretty amazing. But the next day, let me tell you, I'm, I was sore as heck yesterday. So today I'll, I'll go back to doing it. I took yesterday off because I started having severe um, sharp pains in my lower back muscles. And when you're working on some of the stances, um, yeah, I must have done something to pull that muscle a little bit. So I took yesterday off and I'm gonna hit it again today. Just keeping it down to, you know, 10 minutes or so until I can work myself back up because I really need to strengthen my core and tone my muscles, which is what I'm working on right now. Then I'll be able to do like, you know, um, Zumba classes or whatever. But they're right now, they're like, don't even try to do a full fledged class because you'll pass out. I'm still pulling anywhere between 800 and 1000 calories a day um, here, you know, because we're not camping, we're not hiking, we're not. I'm not doing a whole lot of stuff. I'm hoping once my toning and strength training gets back up, that once I start working out, I'll be able to get up to that, you know, 1,000 to 1,200. Um, my goal weight is somewhere between 170 and 180. I would love to hit a low of 170, 165, and then pop back up between 175 and 80 as a maintenance goal. 
Um, I don't think I want to get below a size 10, but I do still have, I carry my weight in my, in my belly a lot of it, and some from my arms. Um, I want to, you know, get rid of some more of that a little bit, just tone it up more and that kind of stuff. Um, we're going on a cruise next week, so this will be really interesting. And we're, I'm not going to pay for the Wi-Fi package so that I can track my Berry-tastic and, and, and do my, my food log. I'm just going to guess it all and attempt to do it. We actually got a suite that has a wraparound balcony. So I plan on, um, by the time uh, next Thursday comes, we fly out Thanksgiving morning. Um, I hope that didn't stop my video. I was getting some, yeah, these stupid solicitation phone calls that come in are driving me nuts. But anyways, um, I hope to get some of the moves and some of the poses down before we leave next week so that I can just go out on the balcony in the mornings and just, you know, do 10 or 15 minutes of yoga and then, you know, walk around the ship and do the track, you know, walking it um, and that kind of stuff. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm excited that I got the approval from all of them, all of my specialists, um, endocrinologists, including my PC, my primary care, all gave me the green light to go ahead and start um, exercising again lightly. You know, I, I, I can't go full fledged at it, but honest to God, after doing 10 minutes of yoga, which I thought was kind of, I was like, uh, you know, while I was doing it, I was like, really? But the next day when I was that sore, I was like, holy shit, I really need to <laughs> concentrate and pay attention on that. So um, food wise, I still can't really tolerate pork that well. Um, it has to be super, super, super tender. They want me to try pulled pork at um, some of the famous barbecue restaurants where they, I guess they soak it brine for quite a while so that there's a lot of moisture and juices in it. So I will try that. Um, I, I don't know if it, it probably won't be before the cruise, but I, I will try that. And eggs, I don't seem to tolerate eggs still. Um, scrambled eggs are definitely a hell no. Um, fried eggs, no. Now I can eat the yolks. Like I can, I can, um, sometimes I will get a burger with the, what is it, over, no, no over you, sunny side up, I think it is, so that I could pour the yolk on the meat and make the meat a little tender. And that way I also get a little more calories and a little more protein in because I'm, I'm lacking on my calories. Um, oddly enough, I'm, you know, she told me they don't want me to get below, I think she said 160. If I get, if I start dropping down below 160, we're going to have a problem and they're going to have to start, you know, looking at, um, looking at stuff. But really, I mean, my drop down has been like, what was I? One. 194. Like I lost 3.8 pounds this last month. So it's not like I'm I'm back to losing 10 or 15 pounds a month. I am starting to slow down, which is fine. You know, I know it's going to take me a couple more months, hopefully by New Year's. Um, well, that might not be enough time. <laughs> um, well, by New Year's, I should be definitely in the 180s, hopefully 185. I'll set a personal goal of 185 for New Year's. I really wanted to hit 150 pounds lost um, by today. I am constipated. That has been like, my plumbing has not been shooting anything out for three days now. Um, so I'm pretty sure once I, I ran out of my um, uh, stuff that they told you to take, uh, the milk of magnesia or whatever it is, Miralax or whatever, I ran out of it. So I'm gonna have to go to the store and get some, which is where I'm gonna be headed here in a minute. Um, yeah, I even tried coffee yesterday, which normally like three sips of coffee would just bam and it would, pipes are flowing, no problem. But for whatever reason, they're not flowing. I'm a little worried about that because I'm one of those weird, you know, with MS, I always have to make sure I pay attention to all of my symptoms, all of my signs and all that kind of stuff. So my concern is having a bowel obstruction. I don't think I have one. Um, I, I'm staying hydrated. I'm getting... Some days I'm getting 70 ounces of fluids in. Um, I do count my cranberry juice as fluid intake. Um, water intake is definitely 48 to 56, um, just straight water um, on any given day. 
but they told me to start drinking some juices, add apple juice in, um, different things like that. So we'll we'll see how all that stuff plays out. But all in all, you know, one year out, I'm I'm pretty proud. I'm pretty happy, except for my hair. Yeah, yeah, my hair still sucks. Um, but there's light at the end of the tunnel because most people say by 18 months out their hair comes back fully as long as they're not malnutrition or and their vitamin they're not uh, vitamin deficiency and i am not um my they they wanted to know i stopped taking b12s um several months ago and my labs came back because originally they were like 7,000 and you're supposed to be between like 100 and 900 on your b12 so i stopped taking the b12 and my labs came back and I was still like 1700 on there. And they're like, yeah, you're, you know, I, I don't have a problem with any of that. All of those, even my iron is, is up, um, which is a shocker because a lot of people by year one, especially um, between nine months and 18 months, their iron levels, they start to realize they have to go in for infusions and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm super glad that I don't have that issue and I don't, you know, I don't need to go in for transfusions for iron or or any of the other stuff like that. Um, I did start taking a vitamin called A, D, E, K from, um, what is it? It's a bariatric one I get on, on Amazon. And that actually helped to bring up my other levels, my liver counts, or not my liver, what was it? Something that was really low and they were worried about it. I can't remember right now off the top of my head. I should have wrote that down. But anyways, I started taking that vitamin and um, that actually helped tremendously get get my other stuff up. The one, the bananas, potassium, potassium, that's what it is. Um, people don't realize it, but if you do a lot of research, vitamin K and stuff like that helps get your potassium levels up. If I were to go on the potassium pill, it would not be very good for me with the rest of my medications, with my MS and everything else like that. So they really didn't want to put me on the prescription, you know, potassium pill. So that ADEK um, vitamin, multivitamin, and it's a dissolvable or chewable. I mean, you can chew it. I just usually suck on them um, because I still have to get my top teeth done. The dentist won't touch me for another six months. They won't even look at me. Um, I have to be maintained for over six months within a five pound, um, you know, a, a five pound window. Um, and, and I understand and I don't want to spend a grand or two on on teeth that you know in six months time like I did this last time you know I got my teeth done and six months later I'm like oh I'm gonna have surgery and so that was just a waste of money and I can't get that money back and they surely don't fit me anymore so um, I am going to start looking into getting my wings done as I call them my wings I wore a short sleeves shirt today so as you can tell that's all skin um, so what I am gonna do is I am planning on having those those taken up the other problem with my shirt sizes is my my, my arms um, like long sleeve shirts I have to go into a large or sometimes even an extra large just to be able to fit my my biceps and stuff like that I think that um, by this time next year I will either have had the surgery or will be in the process of, of starting to get ready to have that surgery done I should be maintained I should start to be able to work out by then you know by six months from now I'm hoping I'll be able to get back into doing weights and stuff I mean I went from benching 195 to barely being able to pick up you know cat food you know we talked about that before um, so at any rate, it, it's all good. I did make an appointment with the um, the psychologist for the weight loss surgery. And I had a talk with her about like, I told you about the guy at the mall and, and different things like that. And um, I was thinking, you know, it's psychological from the surgery and that. And she says, no, because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty mouthy. I, I stand up for myself, you know. And I tell him to get the fuck out of my face and, and that story. It, cussing it just get used to it <laughs> or don't watch I'm sorry um, you know I, I don't have a problem saying no to people I'm not intimidated by guys my only fear is if they were to attack me that I couldn't defend myself and so she said that that's basically all just a strength thing and once I start being able to work out and all that it'll be better I had my Sika test S E C A if your guys's doctor's office offers those I highly recommend doing them post 
and pre if you can. I only lost nine pounds of muscle mass, which is amazing. And my, well, I was extremely, I mean, I was over the male's average muscle in my body, even though I was severely obese. Um, so only, and I think I only lost a total of, I don't have the piece of paper in front of me, but it's, it was like 12 total pounds of mus of, of, no, nine pounds of muscle mass out of the 149 pounds that I lost. So I, I don't know what I've seen, but anyways, on the scale, I only dropped down like two points from where I was previously in my muscle mass throughout my body. I am still way above the average woman's muscle mass, and I'm also above the average male's muscle mass in my body. Um, but again, I was used to before getting diagnosed with MS, before being bedridden, and being put on the steroids and all the other meds, that caused me to gain pretty close to 80 to 90 pounds right there just with those meds. Um, so that's, you know, it is what it is. But um, I used to be extremely active, you know, bowling leagues, all kinds of stuff. Um, so I'm really excited that this summer I got, yeah, the lady, she goes, the, the workout lady, I don't know what she's called, but the trainer, I guess that's with our, with my clinic anyways, she did the Sika test on me and she goes, holy cow, that's awesome. She goes, well, at least you're working out and you're exercising. And I go, I ain't doing shit. I haven't been approved to be able to work out for nothing. You know, I'm hoping you're going to give me the okay here and I got one more appointment and then I can start working out. And she said, well, you had to have been active. And I go, well, I walked a lot and, you know, I did a lot of the hiking and stuff while we went camping and all that. And she said, most people just sit on the couch and expect the surgery to do everything for them. Um, that's not going to happen, guys. And honest to God, if I don't start exercising pretty soon, I would probably start to gain the weight back simply because I'm not... I'm not burning the calories that I that I'm that I'm taking in, you know. Um, my personal opinion, but and I think working out and toning up my muscles might help a little bit, like with my with my wings and stuff like that. We'll see. Um, we'll we'll just have to see how everything plays out. But I'm really excited, guys. This next year is going to be amazing. I have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of plans, including taking my boys to Vegas for their 21st birthdays. Um, my oldest one agreed to wait a year so that we can just take them both at once because I wasn't doing two trips. I just wait too much money. Um, and my husband's a Hilton Honors Reward. And they're not paying me. This is not some advertisement. But honest to God, guys, if you want to go on trips like that, the Tropicana in Vegas is a Hilton Honors um, hotel. So if you save up all your points, you can go stay in Vegas for the weekend and only pay like a hundred and some odd dollars depending on, well, and well, or more depending on how many points you have, you know, that, that you rake up and stuff. Um, really good. Cause then, you know, we have Allegiant, which flies down for like, I think it's 68 bucks a person, you know, so it's a really good deal. Um, which is surprising, but I'm sure that there's, I know in some places Southwest has $69 plane tickets to go to Vegas as well, depending on what city you're flying out of. It's not as expensive as, as most people think, but um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm super excited about that. We have the cruise next week. Um, that's going to be my cruise to celebrate my one year surge anniversary. And then, like I said, we're going to take the boys to Vegas. Then we have a bunch of camping trips and all that. And then next September, we're going on another cruise on the big, big Royal Caribbean ship. The first Royal Caribbean cruise we took, didn't really care for it. But we're going on this one specifically for the ship. It's the, I think the Allure of the Seas or Symphony, not the Symphony. I think it's the Allure of the Seas. But it's the big, huge one that has the waterworks um, production show and an acrobatic show and all that kind of stuff um, so we're pretty much going on that one just for the ship just to see how the ship is and hopefully you know I am wearing a two-piece suit on this suit however the top of it actually covers covers my my stomach area it goes down and covers and then ties in the back um, but I'm hoping by next September, I will feel pretty confident in wearing an actual two-piece bathing suit to show my midriff. But we'll just have to see where the skin lies within the next year. Um, 
it is what it is, guys. Like, honestly, take before and after pictures. I can't stress that enough. And measurements. Measurements are huge. Um, like, you go in and figure, like, I lost a total of 192.5 inches. Honest to God, that's the circumference. It's larger than the circumference of a 10 by 12 room. It's actually a 10 by 9 room. No, 10 by 10 is 100. Anyways, it, it's it's a lot of inches. You know, um, comparing my shirts, I should have done that. I should have taken a picture of my my big shirt with my current shirt over the top of it. Maybe I'll do that um, for my 13-month uh, thing. I'm going to do my best to continue to do my monthlies um, on here because I think that's important. I think it's also important to note that um, my MS is still stable. I still have no new lesions, no acerbations, um, and I have remitting, relapsing MS, which I was constantly having a new one at some point or time throughout the year. And re the ones that I had were flaring up. Um, I've been super lucky, knock on some wood somewhere, um, that since the surgery I haven't had that. Um, I start to get headaches when I don't, when I'm not getting enough food, I've noticed. But for the most part, my migraines and all that stuff, gone. I don't really get them anymore, which is super amazing. Um, I've gotten them once or twice, but I know why that was, like driving without the sunglasses on and the bright sun and stuff. The, with my MS, the bright sunlight affects my headaches. The, it's the outside stimulation and stuff like that. And I don't think that's ever going to change. That I don't think that's ever going to go away. But I know ways to counter it. You know, I have the little shades that go over my glasses. Um, I just didn't wear them that day. I didn't think it would be that bad out because it was rainy that morning and then by the time the afternoon came, it was super bright, and I was like, oh my God. So, um, just have faith, you guys, in yourselves. Believe that you can do it, and and work for it. You know, sometimes you're going to hit stalls. I, I hit stalls throughout this last year big time. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Stalls are important because, um, like one of my doctors explained to me, when you stall, that means you lose weight. If you bounce back up, you're only going to bounce up to where you stall. So you want stalls because if you go 50 pounds without having a stall, that means you can gain all that 50 pounds back instead of going, oh, okay, I stalled, um, you know, at within 10 pounds or 20 pounds, then, you know what I mean? Your, your little window there is much smaller. So stalls are your friends. I know you don't want to hear that. I know it sucks because some people stall for like two months or three months. Some people only stall for two weeks. You know, but those stalls are important in the process and you should be hoping for stalls at some point. Um, I'm actually hoping I get down to 180 or 185 and hit a stall. Um, I've been stalled at this 191 for a week or so now, but I'm hoping to go down another five pounds and hit a stall so that I know if I come back up, then, you know, that's more than likely where I'll end up. I have started to keep my clothes um, the clothes that are bigger for me because I just don't know how, how much smaller I'm going to get. Honestly. Um, I know that they say within 18 months, you should know, but at some point I'm keeping my 14s and my 12s, um, just in case, you know, just in case something happens with my MS or I have to do a steroid batch again, or, you know, something I'll get on it and then I'll get off of it. But then I'll temporarily need the larger sizes. Now, if I get down to a size 10, I'll probably throw everything away, you know, above probably a 12 or, or a 14. Um, but at some point, you got to kind of, it's a mental thing of, okay, when do I stop getting rid of this sizes of clothing? And it it took me a bit to get rid of the 16s because I was, I, I would have been a 16 most of my life before MS, before I had kids, you know, I, I was a 16. Um, and so to me, it was like 16 was the size that I thought I could get down to. So to get down below that is pretty freaking amazing. Um, and most people look at my high school pictures and look at my pictures, um, from now and think that I actually, I look better than, than I did in high school. Um, just in the face, not just necessarily the body, but just in, in my face and so forth. Um, so just keep the faith guys hope for stalls take the before and after pictures do monthly pictures because it really does help 
um, especially when you hit those stalls and measure 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 do your measurements guys because when you hit those stalls that scale may not be moving but by god you just went down a whole pant size you know in that month that you stalled or you went down a whole shirt size or two for that matter the measurements are really important i know this one is really long but it is my year um oh somebody private messaged me about food i still do take a protein shake in the morning every morning I've been doing that for years since I was diagnosed with MS over 10 years ago. And that's strictly because I need to make sure that I get the protein and the vitamins and the minerals that are in the, the protein shakes. So I am currently doing the Premier Protein. I am going to talk to the doctor when I get back about switching over to one of the other ones that I actually like. Um, it's very comparable. It has a little bit more iron in it than the than the premieres and it has a little less protein but I'm hitting my protein goals I don't have a problem hitting protein whatsoever I have a problem hitting my carb macros and my freaking sugar macros I don't hit those I can eat protein all day long I can go eat burger you know beef burger ground the 93% you know 7% fat I can go eat that I can eat the turkey burger I can eat chicken like thank God um, and all that kind of stuff turkey I can eat all that just not really a ham um, so I don't have a problem with my protein I have a problem with carbs and I have a problem with sugar and calories obviously because if you're just you know at some point you eat too much protein protein is going to turn into fat I haven't hit that yet according to the nutritionist that I had my appointment with um, so I do have that shake and I still do the overnight oats guys I totally love those the thing that I'm gonna miss the most on this cruise is my overnight oats that I have almost every single day that has approximately 17 or 18 grams of protein in it um, between the two I do a two-thirds cup of oats and half of one of the vanilla protein shakes make sure you soak them at least overnight in the refrigerator you don't cook them it's in the refrigerator you know um, usually when we go on vacations locally camping and stuff like that I got no problems because I can make it and then put it in the fridge I always have the next day with me so that when I get out camping I make them for the next few days and I still have one for for the next morning you know so um, and then I just eat regular you know like I'll have a banana as a snack um, yeah my nutritionist wants me to eat more of the carb stuff at dinner versus the vegetables right now um, to try and get my my counts up and I'm supposed to be adding dressing and sauces to my stuff to try and help get an extra hundred calories in out of those type of things a day so I'm working on it um, the problem is is I don't I mean teriyaki sauce and barbecue sauce I'm loving that I got to admit I didn't really care for barbecue sauce before surgery it's really bizarre but I'm really loving it um, that's another thing guys don't go buy $600 worth of crap before your surgery because I promise you your taste buds will change after surgery and they will continue to change you know um, and part of that reason is because you're not eating as much sugar stuff you're not eating as much of the carbs and stuff like that your body is detox during the liquid phase of pre-surgery um, and then of course after surgery you're on freaking protein shakes for what seven to ten days or something like that depending on how you know where you get it done and what you get done um, you're on protein shakes for another week afterwards on liquids and then you go to pureed stuff and then so your taste buds are, are going to change obviously because they're not used to all the salt they're not used to all the sugar milk chocolate that's another thing I can't eat anymore I put that in my mouth and I about want to throw up I'm like oh dark chocolate I can have one of those little dub squares of dark chocolate you know I get a candy bar and I break it up it lasts me like six months but I'll eat one of those little squares PMS time yeah well, I'm not going to lie. This last PMS time, I had two squares during it because I was having really bad cramps. But anyways, I can eat dark chocolate okay. But milk chocolate, not on your life. You know, not on your life. Um, so food-wise, guys, like I eat green beans, asparagus. Uh, broccoli is difficult to digest because it is such a high fiber. It's a, a dense, it's hard for your stomach to break down. At least with um, gastro bypass with the r and y that I have um, that's what they told me so I only eat two of the heads I don't eat the stalks I eat just the broccoli heads and two of those is the max that I eat in any sitting 
Um, and you know what, guys? I have a fryer too. The whole point of this is not to not to deprive yourself so you're like, oh, I can't. That's not living, guys. It's not. You know, every once in a while, I'll steal a fry from my husband. Granted, usually only happens at Red Robin because I don't really care for fries anywhere else. McDonald's fries, just the smell of them makes me want to barf. Um, but I also had my gallbladder out years ago and I've always had an issue with their fries, smelling the oil and the grease in them. I can do that since that's, and that hasn't changed, however weird that is. Um, but I, I do that. I'm not going to freaking lie. And I'll order a cheesecake and have like two bites out of it and that's it. I'm good. You know, it's not about depriving yourself of some of the stuff. Somebody keeps asking, what about pizza? Yeah, go look at, um, what is that called? The fit, my fitness pal, look up the pizzas. Berry Tastic has the pizzas, like Domino's Thin Crust Pizza. You can have that. And the carb count actually isn't that bad, guys. And honest to God, you're not eating more than one piece. Well, if you are, maybe you've had the sleeve or you need to start working on cutting back on your portion sizes. Portion the stuff, guys, but still let yourself have some of that stuff once in a while. I'm not saying go eat pizza every day because that might become an issue, but everyone's like, you get a craving for something, go have a bite of it. You don't have to eat the whole fucking pizza. Just, you know, have a little bit of it. I personally like to get the little personal, um, I'm into this barbecued chicken pizza right now. The little personal ones from Pizza Hut. Because I eat one and a half. Well, I don't eat the crust and stuff on them. So technically it's just one piece if I measure it out. I eat literally one piece of that. And, and I'm pretty much good. And, you know, so... I still eat that stuff, guys. I do. And even on the sheet that my nutritionist gave me, she goes a little two inch by two inch square of cake. So those little cake mugs I talked to you guys about before in some of the other videos, they're perfect. I don't eat two inches and two inches of it. You know, I have a couple bites out of it and then I give it to my husband. I'm like, here, honey, I can't eat anymore. <laughs> but don't deprive yourself of this stuff because then that's when your depression is going to stick in. That's when, um, you know, the the... I'm not a foodaholic, so I don't know if this is 100% for sure, but this is what the psychologists have been saying. If you deprive yourself on that kind of stuff, then that's when your psyche and your food cravings are going to kick in. Not that your body's hungry, but your mind is going, why the fuck can I have that piece of cake? You know, as an example, and you're going to want to do it. That's how they explained it to me. So I don't really get hungry still. I'm a year out. I don't get hungry unless I go four hours. Um unless I go four hours, you know, or so, like, it has to be like four hours before I even start to feel it. And it's more of a pain and that kind of thing than, than my mind going, oh. But I have gotten in the habit of saying, okay, I need to eat every couple hours, I need this, I need that. Um, so, yeah, guys, just good luck.